Welcome everyone, and this lecture we're going to cover so-called uh, Adams algorithm uh, incorporated with the Nestor momentum uh, updates. So here we have, uh, <clears throat> and it's short for N atoms, okay, N atoms, okay, uh, which is atom with Nestor momentum. The algorithm itself is very simple, like we preluded before the original atom algorithm is trying to uh, update using an exponential smoothing or exponential decay type of situation for update first order momentum and second order momentum. As we said before, <clears throat> this atoms with the uh, uh, Nestor momentum is trying to update the way we update uh, <clears throat> the first order momentum. Instead of like a Yogi, we are updating this uh, second order momentum differently. Okay, so the idea is uh, <clears throat> trying to improve Adam's convergences and one of the ways to do that is update uh, the first order momentum using a, what we call the projected momentum. <clears throat> the concept is we calculate the uh, first order momentum V and second order momentum S exactly the way as or Adam has. However, uh, however, if when we calculate the VT, which is the uh, V hat, which is the calibrated uh, VT, and we're using this new uh, momentum we calculate as a step ahead. It's very similar to the natural momentum <coughs> uh, algorithm. We're using so-called uh, a projected solution to calculate uh, gradient. So in this case, it's fairly easy. We all we have to do is using one more time with the beta, beta one times VT. VT is the projected VT and one minus beta one of GT. <coughs> okay. And we divide it by a so-called uh, one minus beta T. T is uh, a, 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 a beta one T is a uh, <coughs> <clears throat> factor actually update every single iteration. So we show you how we update the beat, beat of t in that case. After we calculate the first order momentum calibrated and second order uh, calibrated second order momentum, we update the we we'll call it calibrate or uh, rescale the g prom, which is the rescale the gradient g prom. The same way we did it in in Adam's algorithm originally, and update <coughs> the solution accordingly. So only thing changes how we update the first order momentum in that case, and we have a schedule for uh, for the beta to be uh, discrete in a sense. So each time we're going to uh, scale the uh, beta one and correspondingly. Okay, we'll show you how this is actually implemented. Um, same thing, we define our objective function and the first derivative of objective function. And for the Rosenberg function and plot the surface plot for the Rosenberg function as well. <coughs> All right. Um, Okay, this is a uh, contour surface chart. Then this is the uh, function, uh, objective function and the first derivative for the Rosenberg function. Very similar to our previous couple uh, Jupyter notebook, and you can download from our uh, course website as well. Here is the main program called Adam NAG, okay, NAG stands for, stays for uh, natural accelerated gradient, basically, and its uh, uh, short name is called N Adam, okay. We do the same thing, randomly choose a initial solution within the bond, and start running this. The only thing different is once we calculate the first order momentum, when we calculate the, the calibrator, we do it again using the new first order momentum to calculate that. 
Ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> and the second order of momentum is to calculate exactly the same as before. We didn't change anything here. Um, over here, which is the lambda represent the step size, is first uh, calibrate the first order momentum divided by square root of uh, a second order momentum in that sense. Okay, so which I just follow exactly the uh, discussion we have this mathematical equation. Okay, <coughs> nothing surprise, and we implement exactly the same structure as we have in uh, Adams algorithm originally. And the main program is also the same, uh, running a thousand iteration, giving an alpha value pretty small to begin with. Um, <coughs> beta one, as is suggested by the literature, um, is 0 0.9, and alpha t uh, beta two is 0.999, as is suggested by the literature. <coughs> okay, this. Uh, Alpha is also suggested by the literature. This is my first try. I didn't tune any uh, further. So we got really lucky and initial solution and all the way to 30, only 31 um, iteration to converge and using about uh, less than four thousandths of a second. So it's very uh, efficient algorithm, very stable. How stable it is, let's look at here. We have, I have, uh, uh, did the same for as Yogi. We're using the Rosenberg function instead of a simple uh, x squared plus uh, y squared. Using the Ros Rosenberg uh, function and calculate the n atom algorithm itself. <coughs> okay. And then, uh, the main program is almost the same. And the only thing is, okay, here we create a range of uh, x axis, y axis, okay. Uh, solve the problem first to get a solution, set of solution. And then, Define the axis and uh, a, uh, x axis and y axis and pl plot a mesh for the x and y axis. Based on the x and y, the list of x and y I have, I'm going to uh, calculate the objective function. Next, we're going to con uh, plot the uh, contour chart, functional chart with the x, y, and objective function. And jet is just the color mapping I'm using. Uh, you can choose rainbow, you can choose GNU, and uh, like a couple example I have in the previous couple uh, notebook. So use, using a different color map and level is I want to plot this contour chart with uh, 80 levels of a different color. I'm going to convert the list of the solution into NumPy array using as array uh, function. And first we're going to plot the line, <coughs> uh, all the solution we have on the uh, history using a white color, okay, using a white dot dash. <coughs> also plotting the final solution with the red dot. How many iteration? I run that only for 200 iteration. I'm using slightly larger uh, alpha and to show you the trajectory of the solution process. It's running for 200 iteration only and for this one instead of 400. <clears throat> I can show you this started with the uh, point right here over the white dot. It kind of zigzag along the valley and they find out is uh, the right momentum is this direction. So she started from here, even go out of map for this. <clears throat> it comes in to gradually converging to the optimal solution. Okay. 
So even though the two within the 200 iteration, we didn't converge that uh, close to the optimal, but you can see the trend already. <coughs> it is uh, fairly <coughs> continuous approaching to the optimal solution. Let's look at the different uh, Okay, this one you can see a little bit better uh, using a smaller uh, step size. <clears throat> and you can see the algorithm originally zigzagging quite a bit. And when it pick up this momentum, it start curves back to his optimal solution. So this one is getting an even better solution. So now we try another smaller step size to see what happened. <clears throat> And you can see that with this even smaller step size and this convergence to convergence to the uh, close to the optimal solution. And so uh, here you can see the impact on the step size. And I, I know uh, what I change is starting from 0.7 and going down to 0.2, uh, then going down to 0.02 as a, an order of magnitude changes and they're still getting uh, pretty close to the optimal solution within 200 iteration and so here we today we introduce two different uh, method again one is the yogi uh, algorithm the other one is n atoms which is the atom with the natural momentum update uh, i'm going to conclude today's lecture and continue with the, uh, another enhancement, which is uh, pretty much adapted by both uh, uh, TensorFlow uh, AI learning platform and uh, so uh, PyTorch both uh, recent year becomes more popular than the Atom is uh, uh, another enhancement for the Atom algorithm uh, using a slightly different modification. And what I want to mention is these type of algorithm, uh, these algorithms, even though they are popular, uh, since they are embedded into both TensorFlow library and the PyTorch library, they're using by uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, projects or even research or uh, uh, commercial projects. And uh, but the original literature, some of them is still not published. Some of them still in the, uh, some of them only published in the uh, uh, proceed, uh, conference proceedings. So these are ideas pretty still pretty new, and a lot of uh, changes coming this way. So I want you to uh, understand these algorithms, even with the smaller changes, people are paying attention now how well they work on different situation and trying to embed it as a part of the uh, uh, deep learning platforms uh, available on the commercial uh, and the research uh, community. So these are much newer algorithms compared to the uh, classic algorithm we are in, we introduce in uh, in your textbook and these type of uh, first order and second order type of uh, algorithm and you can probably see uh, uh, the algorithm we introduce in the textbook like BFGS quasi Newton method Newton method Newton method with a trust region conjugate gradient method, uh, limited memory, uh, BFGS method, and um, trust region Newton's method. <clears throat> and these, those algorithms are uh, aimed to solve to the solution in the high precision. But in the machine learning process, since it's a very iterative or recursive process, <clears throat> at each iteration, we really uh, care less or, or less care uh, about exact optimal solution location as long as we can improve 
our current solution, which means we can get a, a fairly close to optimal solution, and then we can move on to uh, accept an, uh, another input, <clears throat> trying to ca recalibrate our solution by a uh, recursive manner. Okay, um, <clears throat> the classic optimization algorithm usually just get one shot and trying to get the best solution back. Spend a lot of effort trying to uh, improve the uh, <clears throat> the convergences, uh, improve the quality of the your optimal solution. But the algorithm we presented right here more focus on how how quickly we can improve our objective function and bring it the solution closer to the optimal solution, and that's. Uh, the main goal because next iteration, uh, next uh, input data coming in, we're going to uh, try to solve this again. And, and by iterative procedure, we can learn what is the optimal solution. Yes. So a very different concept and very different uh, motivation in a sense. So I want, I don't want you to uh, uh, making a prejudgment and say, okay, the classic uh, method is no good. Uh, these are the new algorithms must be better. No, not necessarily for uh, different purpose. Uh, for machine learning and deep learning type of uh, application, these algorithms are considered very, very good already. And I try uh, in these lectures, and first we introduced uh, to you <coughs> Uh, the convergence behavior and how good I can tune the uh, <clears throat> parameter or the step size, the exponential smoothing fac factors, and so on and so forth to get a quick convergence also with a good quality of a solution. And later on, I'll show you how <clears throat> uh, these type of uh, uh, how this type of uh, convert uh, this type of algorithm, their convergence behavior looks like, if you using different uh, parameters in that sense. So these are the um, <coughs> uh, purpose I introduce these algorithms. It doesn't mean I want you to take a judgment or conclusion which algorithm is better, and but I just want you to understand uh, the algorithm for these newer uh, so-called. Uh, Gradient, based on the gradient descent algorithm and make a uh, adjustment or make improvement and they have their different uh, uh, different application different motivation to begin with okay I'm going to conclude this lecture and we'll see you in the next lecture uh, video and we're talking about Adam Max okay bye bye